All right, welcome everybody to the September 21st Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. Uh, as you may be aware, if you've been on any Hyperledger calls before, there's two things that we have to abide by. The first is the antitrust policy. Uh, so it is uh, worthwhile to note that there are a number of different people on the call uh, from potentially different organizations. We need to make sure that we are not participating in any activities that are prohibited under any of the antitrust and competition laws across the world. The second thing uh, that we have to abide by in these meetings is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Um, in general, just be respectful of others and their ideas and opinions and thoughts. So for announcements today, we have the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter that goes out each Friday. If you do have anything that you would like to include in that newsletter, please do leave a comment on the wiki page that is linked in the agenda. The second announcement that we have is that we have a how to create a currency management application and deploy it on a Hyperledger Fabric Network workshop. And it is scheduled for October 12th. And there is a registration link in the agenda. So if you're interested in attending that, please do uh, register for that particular workshop. Any other announcements that anybody would like to make today? Actually, a small announcement from me. Since uh, we are switching the way we are conducting the weekly meetings in Iroha, essentially, I was asked to do an email subscription. So I guess I will share the link in TOC if anybody is interested in Iroha 2 newsletter, which will be be weekly as well. Uh, please subscribe in the form I will provide the link for. Okay, That's great. It. Thank you so much, Victor. Any other announcements? Okay, if there's no other announcements, then we'll go on to the quarterly reports. We did get the uh, Hyperledger Firefly report that came in last week. Uh, I know that a number of people have had a chance to review that and there's been some back and forth on that particular report. But I did want to see if there was any questions that anybody wanted to bring up today on that report. Okay. If you haven't had a chance yet to read the report, please do so. Um, and we'll, we'll make sure that we get that one merged in when we either reach everybody having reviewed it or um, two weeks has passed. All right, for upcoming reports today, uh, we're expecting the Besu and the Cal Caliper reports to come in, so we'll keep a lookout for those. Uh, we also have uh, the start of the Q4 reports that I've included in here, even though they're not due for another couple weeks, but I did want to um, make sure that Cacti and Fabric knew that their quarterly reports for Q4 were going to be uh, coming due here October 12th. So um, you've got a couple weeks before you have to do that, but just a, an FYI that that's coming. Any questions on reports before we move on to the main agenda? Okay, so for discussion items today, we have two graduation requests. We have the Cacti graduation request and we have the Firefly graduation request. Um, we'll start with the cacti one since that one came in first, and then we'll move on to the firefly one. So um, Rama, Pete, well, I guess it's probably Rama, you're probably going to present uh, today since Peter's at the airport. Um, did you want to take over and do that? I will. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you just fine, Rama. All right. Uh, you can see my slides, right? Okay. Yes, we can see your slides. Great. So, uh, yeah, just before I start, uh, as I mentioned on the Discord channel, uh, I uploaded these slides to the uh, TOC issue that uh, Peter created and also opened a PR and hyperledger. Okay. 
So um, I'm going to run through the different uh, criteria that are outlined in the incubation exit uh, criteria wiki and uh, uh, go through first the mandatory criteria and also then uh, go through some of the other um, uh, ancillary attributes of the project and the benefits of the graduation. So first, uh, legal obligations and licensing. Uh, a code is licensed under Apache 2, and we have complied with this for uh, since the projects were open source. Both Cactus and Beaver, when they were Hyperledger Labs, were covered by uh, Apache 2 and, and declared as such. Uh, we also have a check configured in uh, this only covers package JSON files for NPM packages at this point, but uh, it does tell you whether at least that part of the code base is uh, uh, covered by the Apache 2 license. Uh, you can see this on the main repository page. Uh, community support, uh, I think uh, this is pretty, uh, this looks pretty healthy for uh, Cacti. We have uh, three major companies that are actively maintaining the project in a very collaborative manner, and uh, there's no uh, imbalance between between them. Everybody is, uh, uh, has contributed uh, significant significantly to the code and to the peer reviews of the project ever since it started, or at least uh, IBM since we uh, uh, since we were in talks with Cactus to merge the project and since then. Uh, we've had uh, code contributions from, this is just what I counted recently. Uh, we have like 79 unique contributors since the project inception, uh, that is since Cactus's inception, and uh, that includes uh, Beaver. Uh, around 10 to 15, depending on where you draw the line, made substantial contributions. Uh, and uh, as I already mentioned, quite balanced. Um, uh, we have uh, weekly calls that, uh, and we have this calls almost every week, like I would say 99% of the time we have, the, have this calls, uh, and we have something to discuss. And the recordings are uploaded on YouTube for everybody to, to view. Uh, the there's pretty high volume activity on the Cacti Discord channel, especially users and the contributors channels. Um, uh, this is from, these stats are from a couple of days ago. I saw 235 ports, 200 stars, and a fairly large number of uh, clones and downloads. So I think uh, this project inspires a fair amount of interest. Uh, it's also been a popular target for uh, Hyperledger mentees. So we have five this year, we had five the previous year, and uh, uh, two before that, uh, hopefully, at least the strategy, maybe it'll plateau, maybe it'll increase, uh, I expect. Mm -hmm. um, test coverage, uh, we have a uh, unit test covering all, uh, configured for all individual packages and modules. If we actually go to see the <laughs> GitHub Actions, um, uh, you'll see a list of uh, several unit tests as well as a bunch of indication tests and uh, uh, all of them are marked as uh, required for any PR to pass. Uh, at this point, we don't have a unified test coverage report, but we are planning to generate one uh, and uh, uh, report, create a report with a table showing the coverage for, for each package. But otherwise, uh, with the inspection, we can actually see that there are, uh, the code coverage is, uh, is pretty high and uh, uh, we enforce that for uh, for PR. Um, the documentation. Uh, so both the cactus and the weaver. Uh, uh, when they were separate, they had their own uh, documentation, and uh, that is pretty well maintained. Uh, and it allowed uh, people to use, the build, and deploy the packages, uh, both uh, through local web server and also. Uh, it was published to, to GitHub pages. Um, it contains details of uh, how to set up uh, systems, how to uh, uh, pull the packages uh, or import the packages, uh, install prerequisites, and then run uh, experiments, uh, that is, end-to-end -end sample runs. Uh, so we are uh, working on an integrated CACTI documentation website. So this is there, just working on some cleanup at this point, and uh, and the PR uh, and working on PR like right at these speed. Uh, in fact, let me just uh, show you what this looks like. So this is published at this point to uh, to my uh, GitHub account. 
So you can see this follows the template that uh, the make docs template that uh, Tracy had created early this year. So we have a bunch of pages. So uh, not all of the pages are completely full, but uh, the, all the relevant documentation that we all had already for the various characters and viewer packages and the respective pipelines are all uh, are, are all present uh, here. So users won't have any trouble uh, navigating through the repository and uh, getting hands on with the code and the sample. Uh, go back to the slide. Uh, yeah, and we have uh, copious amounts of documentation. Otherwise, the specifications of the character's type paper, there are a bunch of RFPs covering all the uh, viewer features as well. Um, the project is uh, well aligned with the Hyperledger's mission um, and uh, the, the goals, the use cases, etc., and just like Acti are uh, well documented in the readme as well as white paper, RFPs, and the tutorial doc. Uh, this is uh, as a, this project was designed to promote and enable uh, interoperability. So, sort of by definition, Cacti confirms to and uh, for, uh, not just fulfills but fulfills but also augments the Hyperledger architecture and, and mission. Because we imagine you can have two different uh, Hyperledger uh, systems, uh, let's say between Fabric and Bezu. Uh, Cacti, by using the uh, existing VLT stacks of the two applications, enables them to carry out. Uh, cross chain transactions. So, in a sense, it, uh, it both follows the architecture and also uh, augments it. Uh, also, we support uh, non hyperledger DLT as well, like uh, Corda, and there's a uh, ongoing work to support Polkadot as well. And uh, in future, we'll also be using Caliper for performance benchmarking and uh, uh, other related projects. Uh, we'll ensure, try to ensure interoperability with Firefly 2. Uh, we've been making periodic releases. Uh, at present, we have uh, two alpha one, and uh, uh, the final two is targeted to be released very soon. And we're using Hyperledger standard release taxonomy, and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, automated pipelines to to publish packages uh, in various languages: uh, JavaScript, Go, Java, and Rust. And uh, I've been triggered by tagging a particular. Uh, commit with, uh, with an updated version uh, as a label. Uh, the infrastructure, I think, uh, is a lot of content here, but uh, uh, this should be, uh, uh, I mean, there's no mystery. Uh, we fulfilled all of the infrastructural requirements uh, from the get-go, uh, even when projects were labs. So uh, sort of by default, Cacti inherits that infrastructure uh, from the uh, from the existing uh, code bases and uh, uh, the uh, so when Cactus was renamed to Cacti, then uh, all of the uh, different Discord channels, the repositories are all renamed, uh, and the mailing list were renamed uh, accordingly. Uh, the two code bases have been uh, merged, and it's quite seamless. And uh, uh, we have one common repository location at this point. Uh, of course, maybe we'll, we might. Uh, figure out we'll to split later on, like other projects have. But at this point, it makes sense to keep everything in one repository, and we have a, uh, a common uh, package. Uh, the the CI pipelines of the projects are have been integrated, and the packages are all published under common Cacti uh, namespace, and the documentation has also been updated accordingly. Um, we are making steady progress with the the deeper integration, which involves uh, uh, eliminating redundant components and uh, merging uh, 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 shared features into one uh, single library and exported a single package, but that's kind of a longer term activity and we will keep uh, making incremental progress in, uh, uh, in every week. Uh, in, also, uh, we learned some lessons from the, when you're merging the project and we produced in collaboration with the Linux Foundation and uh, exhaustive checklist for uh, other project maintainers uh, who may want to uh, merge two projects like this in the future. So you can find that in the Hyperledger wiki. Uh, the security vulnerability reporting guidelines are in place. The security FD file is been there in the root folder of the uh, Cacti and previously Cactus repository for forever. And this states the Hyperledger security policy that's last been agreed upon. Uh, 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 the TOC is at present uh, uh, debating and finalizing the final 
the new policy and coding template and as and when that gets finalized we will uh, state that we will we'll put that in the in the main repo uh, and uh, cacti already has a spot for security reporting peter and uh, he subscribed to the security mailing list and he participates in apology foundation security discussions uh, uh, whenever we have the new policy, uh, we will add extra box from the maintenance list uh, uh, at that point. Uh, we have an open SF best practice. Oh, 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 you come back. Calm yeah. down. You come back. Yeah, yeah, bye, Miss Pan. Yeah, bye. Oh, just go. You're good, Rama. Go ahead. Yes. Mm -hmm. I might need your help. Yes, okay. So, uh, yeah, we have an openness of best, best practices badge. And as you can see, uh, I mean, you'll find this on the, if you go to the Cacti repo, you'll find this at the top of the page. And yeah, as you can see, we are, uh, we check all the uh, criteria. We also, uh, again, having manually looked at the Apple Edge TOC's best practices uh, guidelines, which uh, uh, Dave led the drafting of earlier this year. I think we follow all of the recommendations listed there. Uh, but of course, the, the TOC can uh, go and uh, check that and corroborate as well. I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Uh, so moving on from the, I think this was the last uh, listed uh, mandatory criteria listed. Let going on to other additional considerations as we recalled in the incubation exit criteria document. Uh, we have several examples of real world use. Uh, so uh, Fujitsu uh, uh, and uh, I see Idru is on the call. Uh, thanks for joining. I know it's very late in Japan. So uh, Fujitsu, together with Consensus, R3, and Soranitsu, uh, delivered a POC uh, uh, for a cross-border security settlement system. So demonstrating a security delivery versus payment across uh, uh, permission Ethereum, and Corda, and uh, Iroha ledgers, and used uh, Cacti for that. Uh, and several links here, uh, articles talking about this particular uh, POC. Um, in 2021, IBM delivered a POC for the Bank of France and HSBC, uh, creating an experimental CBDC uh, suite of applications that was built under the Digital Bureau Initiative, which is something that the Bank de France is very interested in experimenting on. And uh, uh, we demonstrated uh, data sharing and uh, delivery of payment, that is the uh, asset swaps across the uh, fabric and border ledgers. And, uh, 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 as you, as you all know, this was also presented uh, and discussed at the CBDC workshop in the last uh, Global Forum in London. Uh, there's some news articles uh, links here. Uh, another uh, uh, experiment or a POC that is talked about in the in the same forum was uh, a DDP between a Casper Lab network and a Fabric network. And uh, uh, this was demonstrated in, in Davos earlier and uh, again talked about it in Dublin. Here's the link as well. And uh, there's also a uh, usage of uh, various connectors from uh, uh, from Cactus in the climate action and accounting sake. This is something that uh, Peter is talking about. Um, so the uh, code is built uh, on very modular lines and uh, composable scenario. What that means is that you can build uh, uh, different transaction pipelines and you can pick and choose Use different modules and different libraries and compose them and build an uh, an end-to-end -end scenario that way. So uh, there's the selection, there's modularity. Uh, the uh, architecture is based on plugins, and we create new plugins for particular uh, uh, narrow scenarios, for particular for uh, use of particular DLTs, as and when we want more extensibility, and uh, you can. To, uh, to compose any use case, you can you can select a particular plugin or, or a set of plugins. Uh, these components can all be downloaded and reported directly either from uh, Docker Hub or from uh, uh, from Git, uh, or from the npm registries or or Maven, etc. Or you can build them directly from source as well uh, by doing the possible. And there are clear instructions and scripts provided to to help any users to do so. Uh, scalability. So. Uh, by design, we have uh, uh, enabled both uh, the, the legacy Cactus design and the Weaver design. They uh, are built on uh, APIs and uh, a modular architecture. So uh, the interoperability is enabled through a combination of uh, REST API uh, as well as uh, some applications that are running on existing DLT stacks like uh, uh, 
if you are connecting a fabric network to the bezel network or a corda network we are not asking for any modifications in those uh, in those dlts uh, we just run applications as they were designed to by those dlts uh, designers and uh, then there are some external comp minimal external components that uh, incur uh, minimal processing overhead and uh, impose uh, very minimal trust footprint um we haven't conducted a formal benchmarking study yet uh but there is uh, an ongoing mentorship project around uh, benchmarking bridges and uh, peter is a mentor on, on that particular project and uh, this will uh, we expect help to benchmark cacti components and the edwin protocols that are supported uh we believe that the framework and toolkit are uh, intrinsically scalable uh, because the api is designed, designed to be horizontally scalable and uh, there some informal tps and latency measurements that uh, we conducted on relay modules a couple of years ago when we were doing the bank forms uh, experiment and which indicated that the the relays or the communication between networks were clearly not the bottlenecks in any sort of cross chain scenario it was uh, the the end networks processing time that was that common uh, and cacti is just a glue between different dlt systems which have their own particular scalability challenges which tend to dominate whatever uh, extra modules cacti with them uh we are closely involved with in, aligned with the the most prominent standardization efforts in the interoperability area um uh cacti maintainers uh, and contributors uh, have been are actively involved in the in such efforts the most prominent one is that is an official ietf working group uh this established in early 2020 that is it was approved uh, by the uh, ietf directors Uh, to uh, uh, and authorized to draft RFCs, and uh, uh, these working groups have uh, somewhat narrow scopes, which can keep expanding as time goes on. So at this point, uh, we are engaged in trying to draft a protocol to uh, enable the secure transfer of an asset from one network to another. So this is one of the interoperability scenarios. There are others, but uh, we are trying to solve this particular problem, standardize it, uh, so it creates a reference for developers, and later we will. expand the scope to uh, asset exchanges and and other kinds of uh, interoperability scenarios and uh, uh, i am involved in uh, this as well as uh, uh, rafael belcher who's been a, a long time contributor to uh, to cactus and, and cacti and uh, an early version of this protocol was implemented by rafael and uh, uh, his colleague andre in the odap promise plugin you can see that it's one of the packages that is uh, under uh, under cacti and uh, the latest version of the this particular protocol is being implemented in a uh, mentorship project this year and that's going on right now it's making good progress um another standard forum that we are involved in uh, is focused on uh, it's run by a group called soda uh, public money they call it soda interop group and it brings together uh, various layer one providers and uh, also interoperability solution providers as well as people who are working on standardization and it's focused on creating high level apis and uh, uh, advising maybe governmental bodies on the legal regulatory aspects of interoperability and uh, both uh, heart and i are been participating in this particular uh, forum uh, i know heart is not uh, at present uh, a cacti maintainer but as you all know he's one of the co-founders so uh, also uh, as we are embedded in the ecosystem we are going to be ensuring that the cacti code confirms to all these emerging standards and also uh, this will increase uh, cacti's visibility and value in the community making it sort of a go to place for anybody seeking uh, interoperability um which leads to my final slide the code is already uh, suitable for production usage and uh, was proven by various uh, real world use cases that i uh, talked about a few minutes ago uh, and uh, uh, graduation graduate startups will give uh, enterprises and various uh, dlt providers who are looking for Uh, a generic interoperation tool uh, that is they are not already tied to a particular uh, vendor uh, or a particular solution uh, they can find a canonical location to look for these tools and also help uh, co develop or contribute new features and also gives them more con- uh, graduation gives them more confidence in the maturity of the code base and uh, new contributors should also be more enthusiastic about uh, using and contributing and uh, we have received some communication and interest from from some companies um graduated pro- cacti project can also create a 
sort of a hub of innovation in the this particular area, the uh, interoperation area, and also act as a reference for other projects that uh, either are trying to work in the same space, like the UA in Harmonia Lab, or, and also in uh, who are interested in how interoperability works, like uh, Firefly. Okay, that's thing done. All right, thanks, Rama. Uh, any questions for Rama? Thoughts on uh, the graduation? Arun. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Rama, for the detailed presentation. And it's great to see the community growth and the way you have put forward all the information that we need. Um, quick observations, um, right, or probably like few things that might help us. Um, would be, I still feel like some of the documentation are referring to older code base. I'm not sure if the documentation is currently updated. Um, that's one thing. And other than that, I really like the way Cacti project itself was um, incubated and then the way uh, Cactus project was initially like incubated and then the way uh, we were joined and then the way uh, white papers uh, were published and the way collaboration happened across. Um, so this is a really good role model and example uh, that the project has set forth forward and all the best with that. Thank you. It would be and also- point taken for the yeah. Sorry, go on. I'm sorry. No, please go on. Right. And, um, one more thing that might help us uh, would also be not necessarily like needs to be done immediately. Um, in terms of, um, so uh, one of the core thing that will, uh, one of the, comp sorry, from within the security domain, right? One of the thing that we were looking at is putting up a framework through which we can evaluate uh, the risks associated with usage of certain things mm -hmm. and especially with cacti when we talk about interoperability across multiple blockchains mm -hmm. and there are certain things that people want to adopt blockchain for and then uh, those guarantees may have to be um, looked into from a different perspective when we choose a common node operator kind of concept mm -hmm. so um, an evaluation like that eventually in the project's roadmap would help uh, people who want to adopt the project. Sure, I think this is referring a bit to the, uh, I think I alluded to this a bit when I talk about like uh, trust footprints and minimal external components. So, so yeah, the, we, we, can, uh, we can definitely talk about the, uh, the implications of uh, using cacti on uh, uh, on the administration of a particular network and uh, how it will impact uh, the potentially the network security and how much overhead and uh, we have different ways of uh, enabling that so you have the like the uh, if you look at the the vision diagram in go to the cacti uh, repository main page you can either connect two networks via node server or you can connect them via uh, relays uh, depending on uh, what your risk appetite is and, and what your ease of use requirements are, you can pick a particular uh, particular model. So, so one of them being uh, somewhat a bit more centralized, one of them being a bit more decentralized. So uh, I think, and yeah, we can we can talk about these. Uh, uh, we have talked about this in the past. I think we've written some stuff about it as well. Uh, uh, potentially, we can write like a blog article or something uh, that addresses this at length. And, and of course, we'll put that in the documentation as well. That answer your question, Arun? Um, no, Rama. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, right, and just the documentation. Let's see. Uh, I mean, see if the project team can update if any relevancy can be updated over there. Um, yeah. Um, in terms of Sorry, open... what can be, what can be updated? Oh, sorry. the documentation I find may not have been updated for a, for a while. I see like old references of characters and um, those information. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're going to be publishing that uh, documentation very soon. So, yeah, okay. I, I just showed you a screenshot of what would I have, but yeah, just uh, cleaning it up. 
Thank you. Right. Jim? Thanks. Yeah, thanks. I uh, just want to say that uh, interop is a strategic area for our enterprise uh, DLT use cases. So really happy to see Apple Engine leading with tech time and, and excited to see it applying for graduation. That's all. Thanks. Thanks, Thank you. Any other thoughts, comments, concerns? Are we ready for a vote? And if we are, can we have a motion and a second? Motion. All right, Peter, thanks. I think I'm not supposed to vote, right? I mean, the cacti is maintained. I'm sorry, Tommy, you, you asked a question. You're, are you supposed to vote? Yeah, I think the cacti maintained is not supposed to vote, right? No, you, you guys will vote. We just need a second, though, before we get to okay. vote. I second. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Arun. Thanks, Arun. Sean, will you take us through the vote? Sure thing. Um, in the matter of the Hyperledger Cacti graduation, uh, I'm going to call the name of the TOC member. Please respond for, if you're for the motion, against, if you're against the motion, or abstain. Um, Marcus, how do you vote? For. Peter, how do you vote? Peter, you're muted. All right, I'll jump to somebody else. We'll get to Peter in a second. Jim, how do you vote? Uh, it's four. Stephen Coran, how do you vote? Four. Bobby, how do you vote? I vote four, and Peter left a message in Discord that he votes four um, because he's boarding a plane. Okay. Uh, Rama, how do you vote? I will do. Yes. Arun, how do you vote? I vote four. He votes four. Tracy, how do you vote? Four. Okay, on the matter of cacti graduation, uh, of the TOC members present, we have unanimous four. So congratulations, cacti team. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. All uh, right. So from here, we'll move on to the Firefly graduation proposal. So Nico, I don't know if you're the one taking us through this. Thanks. Yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be the one talk doing most of the talking today. But uh, thank you, Tracy. Thank you uh, to everyone. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real quick. I just have a couple of slides to take us through. Um, and then I would like to take a look at the report as well. So um just uh, I, I don't plan on talking for too long and i'm going to try to keep an eye on the time here as we go but uh can you all see okay great so basically uh, i just want to i want to start off with introducing a couple of our maintainers uh, we have some new toc members since the project started and we also have some new maintainers and so i want to just do some brief introductions uh, some of them are actually here on the call today uh, i want to provide just a couple of quick highlights of the project and some recent changes, um, some just kind of updates in case people haven't been following the project all the way since the beginning. Um, real, very briefly touch the, the highlights of the proposal that we put together and then uh, leave some time for feedback and discussion afterwards. So uh, that's kind of what I would like to take us through right now. Uh, so first of all, I would like to introduce uh, a couple of our maintainers. So we have, uh, as we'll see as we get into the proposal and into, into some of the highlights, um, we have maintainers representing three different companies now on Firefly. Uh, first, we have Binode from Fidelity and Dennis from OneOff. And uh, each of them has made uh, significant contributions in the blockchain connectors and the blockchain specific uh, protocol code within Firefly and, and plugins within Firefly core. And so, so each of them has made significant contributions to the project and I wanted to recognize those contributions, um, call them out here today and uh, just give them an opportunity to, to say hi, uh, just very briefly kind of what area of the project they're involved in and uh, just put a, a name and a voice to the face and, and to the GitHub handle. So uh, Vinod, I uh, would like to, to introduce you first. Uh, feel free to, to, to say hi real quick. Thank you, Nico. Um, so I'm Vinod Damle, as introduced. 
uh, work for Fidelity Investments, uh, been a contributor to Firefly ETH Connect, as well as the Firefly Signal projects, um, and you know, looking to continue being uh, actively involved, uh, following all the progress um, and you know the the outside contributions that Firefly is uh, receiving day in and day out. Um, that's that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vinod. And uh, next, I'd like to introduce Dennis. So Dennis has been the key developer on a brand new blockchain connector for Firefly, the Tezos Connect blockchain connector. And uh, he's been, been working on that connector and the corresponding uh, Firefly core plugin. And so they have both been recently added to the code base. And I just wanted to give him a chance to say hi to everyone here as he's relatively new to the project. And uh, so Dennis, glad to have you here today as well. Thanks, Nico. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Dennis, software engineer at Instinct Tools, since recently a maintainer of the Firefly, one of uh, currently working with one of company on the implementation of the Tesla connector for Firefly. In our opinion, Firefly is a great project which allows to increase development speed and easily uh, send and manage transactions for different chains. That's why we chose it to use for integration of our web application with various chains. Glad to be here. Thanks. Awesome, thank you, Dennis. Just a couple of quick highlights uh, before we go through the proposal in case you haven't been following the project since the beginning. Uh, Firefly has been an incubating project since September uh, 2021. So for uh, almost exactly two years now. Uh, it is up to over, because uh, this doesn't include the new connector that was just contributed, uh, 752,000 lines of code spread across 20 repositories. Uh, it's so many repositories because it's a, a very modular and pluggable microservice architecture. So uh, there, are many, there are some shared libraries in there. There are many different microservices that can be combined and composed in different ways. Uh, over the course of the history of the project, we've had 245 unique contributors, uh, 84 of those being unique code committers to the project. And we now have 12 maintainers representing three different companies. We have a very active community in Discord, community calls, GitHub, and uh, I, the, the Discord channel is like literally every morning when I wake up, there's uh, there's five questions from five different people waiting for me there about uh, you know how to use Firefly or or somebody uh, with an idea or a question, and uh, it's just it's super exciting to see the the level of engagement uh, on our on a recent community call. Uh, a new community member joined and said, hey, I, I, I heard about Firefly. It looks really interesting. I want to contribute. And uh, that was last week, I believe. And they've already had uh, code merged into the project now. So uh, just super exciting to see the, the continued growth and continued acceleration of that growth. Uh, there's strong global adoption in enterprise production use cases. Uh, and this is something we're just really proud of. Uh, just the, the number of companies that have seen the value proposition of Firefly and are using it in production today. So uh, given some of these um, kind of the recent changes in maintainership and just the continued growth and acceleration of the project in the community, we feel like now is the right time to come forward for uh, moving to the next stage from an incubating project to a graduated project. And so I, I wanna just real briefly walk through the proposal. Uh, I don't have this in slide form, uh, but I have the proposal here and I, I'm not gonna go through it and read it word for word. Hopefully uh, the TOC has had a chance to read it and kind of has thoughts or, or questions on it that we can discuss afterward. Uh, we've, we've got some great feedback on the PR already, uh, some of which I've tried to, to comment on there and some of which I think this is a, a great venue to discuss here today. So. Uh, some of this I've already covered, just kind of the background. Um, many of the, the requirements here are just sort of checkbox requirements that just have to be there because they're, they're requirements of Hyperledger. And uh, those were many of these were satisfied back when Firefly first moved even into labs or from labs into incubation as well. Um, so I'm not going to spend a, a ton of time just rehashing all of that stuff. Um, some of the some of the highlights, though, that I'd like to touch on is uh, just the as I've talked about for the the very active community, uh, the the active community calls, uh, the Discord channel, and uh, it's it's actually been 
overwhelming in a good way, uh, the number of pull requests that we've had from, from different community members across all the different repos. And uh, I, I love seeing it. It's, uh, it's great just seeing people like seeing areas where the project can be improved or they can just jump in and uh, provide value. And I'm just really, really excited about that. Um, we've had, as I said, you know, 84 different independent committers that have actually code merged into the project. And uh, this is this is a, a, a key area now that we have maintainers from three different organizations. And uh, I, I know there was some questions about uh, this particular topic, and I, I plan to discuss that a little bit in detail. Um, Tracy and others had, had questions about sort of this, uh, the idea of this maintainer pipeline that we discussed here in the proposal. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to show a picture of that and describe that in a little more detail here in just a little bit. Um, but I, you know, in terms of other aspects of kind of uh, areas that need to be considered in the project, test coverage, uh, Firefly is in really good shape. The we have very high standards for for test coverage. Um, all of the I would say that the critical path code in Firefly core, shared libraries, the transaction manager library, uh, transaction manager based connectors all have 100% unit test coverage. Uh, there may be some individual repos uh, that are kind of on the edges that don't have 100% test coverage. They do have tests. And uh, there's a, a very robust, comprehensive end-to-end uh, -end test suite that runs as a part of every pull request and uh, runs that against a live running system. Uh, I won't spend too much time on that. It's it's really interesting and, and fascinating and a lot of code. If you're interested, happy to talk about that some other time. Uh, the doc site has a, a lot of documentation on it. Uh, there's a couple, I'll actually just pop over there real quick, just to, to walk you through a couple of the pages, because uh, some of the other things in the proposal talk about architecture, just how this fits into uh, the broader uh, hyperledger picture as well. And so, so we, we really see Firefly as a, it, it's not a DLT, it's not a blockchain, uh, but it's, it's a platform to accelerate the development of blockchain powered apps. So it provides APIs. It provides uh, these, these technologies that Web2 developers are used to using, like uh, HTTP REST APIs and WebSockets, and makes those readily available to access uh, things that are traditionally more challenging to develop against, like blockchain nodes. And so, so Firefly is uh, it's this middleware layer that sits uh, in between your, your DLT and uh, provides lots of the, the really important, but also really difficult to get exactly right plumbing pieces that uh, connect both the, the chain and off-chain storage and uh, provide a robust, durable event bus to connect your application to all of these things. Um, I, I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about what Firefly is, because I, I hope by this point everyone is familiar with it, but just wanted to highlight that if, if you're not familiar with it, uh, one of the requirements is having good documentation, and I, I feel like we have uh, some excellent documentation that you can go and learn about what Firefly is, all the different pieces that are inside it, how the uh, how the blockchain connector framework works, how that works with Firefly Core, and how this makes it easy to extend the Hyperledger Firefly architecture with new blockchain connectors, like uh, Dennis has done recently with the Tezos connect connector and, uh, and use this framework to, to rapidly build that new connector. Um, so it's lots of great pages in there to look at if, if you're interested. Um, I don't want to spend a ton of time walking through all the docs though. Um, in terms of alignment and integration with other projects, uh, at, you know, even Rama touched on, uh, it, it will be great to see even more collaboration between Cacti and Firefly in the future. We absolutely agree. Um, and, and the question, I'll, often comes up like, hey, it looks like both Firefly and Cacti are uh, interop projects. Uh, which one should I use? And and uh, we see them both being very complementary, where Cacti focuses on sort of the, the on-chain uh, interop between different blockchains and being able to, to, uh, to link the, the chains specifically. Firefly's focus is, uh, while it does let you connect to multiple blockchains at the same time, its focus is a little more broad in being a, a common platform, an open source platform that can be a standard for development of Web3 apps, uh, which can most certainly be used 
with cacti to uh, directly connect those two chains together, for instance, uh, would be one really interesting use case. Additionally, uh, Hyperledger Firefly comes with uh, connectors that are both compatible and heavily tested with Hyperledger Besu and Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, it, it ships with the, the, the Firefly CLI. It comes with options out of the box to spin up uh, simple net networks, either a basic network or a fabric network on your local machine and makes it really easy to get started with using both Firefly and Besu or both Firefly and fabric together locally on a dev machine. Um, a, a bunch more just kind of checkbox items here in the proposal. Uh, we have a, a passing open SSF best practices badge. Um, I think the the other thing that I really wanted to to touch on here, though, was the, the the requirement of sufficient real world use, and I think this is an area that Firefly really shines in. Uh, I won't read all the details here, but uh, we Firefly is in production in use by tons of different companies. Uh, this is just a small list of of some examples of ones that we can talk about here today, uh, but we see. You know, several different consortiums that represent many different companies in, in different uh, market segments, such as uh, healthcare, insurance, finance, and, and all kinds of things like that. So you see uh, Synaptic Health Alliance, the Institute's Risk Stream, uh, the SWIFT did a CDBC sandbox, uh, uh, CGI Federal, DFCRC, uh, one of has launched a an NFT marketplace with Warner Media that was recently demoed on a uh, on a community call with Firefly. Uh, Ascendbit and Lackchain have all built things uh, that are uh, in production on Firefly today, and 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 there's more too. The list goes on. So this is like like I said, just something that, that we're really excited about, just to see the the level of adoption and uh, the both the number of companies and the wide variety of companies that are using Firefly and have embraced the value of it. Um, there's some more comments here on, on testing and uh, performance and those sorts of things, but that's, that's kind of the, the, the main things that I wanted to walk through on the, uh, on the proposal. Um, I did want to just very specifically address some of the feedback that was left on the proposal, particularly around uh, maintainer diversity and uh, there was a specific question of, you know, if um, there, there's a requirement in the exit criteria that uh, I, I can actually just scroll to it here today, Let's see, um, that there's no single company or entity that's vital to the success of the project. And there's concern that, uh, you know, if, if Kaleido were to not be involved in the project, would the project still live on? We believe that the community is is in a very healthy state. Uh, we believe that there are enough companies and enough people that are both using Firefly, both engaged in the project, uh, in the in the community, and contributing code and maintaining code. Now that uh, if any one particular company were to step away from the project, that the project would live on and it would still be able to be successful. Uh, we we feel confident that the community is at that point and uh, it's. It's it's ready to move forward. Um, it's I'd also like to point out that you know the the empirical measurable requirement that's stated here three legally independent committers we we do meet that requirement so we believe we meet minimum here and uh, we also are confident of the the more subjective requirement uh, as to uh, you know a, a single company being vital to the success of the project uh, we don't we believe that uh, the we have sufficient diversity within the project today. And we we're confident that that is going to continue increasing. Uh, we're, we're excited about our, our maintainer pipeline and uh, the number of companies that we have in that pipeline. Uh, Sophia, or uh, excuse me, Tracy asked about you know what, what does that look like and, and what are some of the companies in it. Uh, this is a snapshot of that. You know, starting on the right, we have uh, the the, the three companies that are currently maintaining Firefly, and uh, one of being the most recent example of a company that just. It has um, it's kind of like the, the textbook case of moving through the pipeline, seeing fireflies, seeing, yep, that's the solution I need for my, my project, um, building a new connector for it, contributing that back to an open to the open source project, and then becoming a maintainer. Uh, moving a little more toward the left, we have lots of different companies that are engaged in the community and have uh, either uh, made contributions or have expressed interest in making contributions, uh, including code contributions and potentially even uh, maintainers in the future. Uh, moving further to the left, just 
Uh, just you know, a, a list again of just examples of companies that are using Firefly. There are many more, uh, and, and many of these are from consortiums of, of companies as well. And you know, sort of thinking about you know anybody that's using Firefly is a potential candidate for moving through this pipeline and uh, becoming a maintainer at some point. Uh, the, hopefully, the the more they're investing in using the project, uh, more they're considering investing in contributing back to it and one day maintaining it as well. So I'd like to wrap things up there. I know we're running short on time and uh, I'll leave a little bit of time for, for questions, feedback or uh, comments that people may have. But thank you for letting me just walk through that and kind of laying out uh, kind of where we're at in the project right now and our vision for continuing to move forward. Thanks, Dito. Any questions, comments, concerns? Everyone? Thanks, Tracy. Um, hey, Nico, thank you for the presentation and thank you also for answering much more questions in a separate call, uh, uh, scheduling that and following through all those. It's great to see the progress the Firefly team has had. And one of the things that I keep quoting everywhere is uh, the way the positivity that team carries, the Firefly team carries. And I've seen this from the time of um, first proposal and um, the way project team uh, took the feedback from the team back then TSC and then went through the lab process and then uh, did set up the community calls. I've been part of some of those calls, at least initially I used to be regular onto those calls. Um, and it's just great to see the way progress, uh, the project has made the progress. Um, just to understand some part of it, um, again, I'm not currently that familiar with the latest update so and i believe i also asked you this question in the separate call um can you reassure or confirm the uh, license part that was in one of the open question back then with the uh, evm part of it i believe sure yeah there, there was a question uh, way back uh, when we were considering moving into labs around licensing uh, around an ethereum a go ethereum specific library uh, that was uh, used by one of the oldest code bases that was donated as part of the project. Uh, there was work back then, uh, but I, I believe before the project even moved into labs to uh, remove the dependency on that library and uh, bring in some other code and bring in code in a different manner that uh, made the, the Hyperledger code base and uh, the Hyperledger repo um, Apache 2 compliant, and we're, we're not bringing in the the, the GPL uh, library that was previously required before the code was donated to Hyperledger. Thank you. Sure. Bobby? Yeah, I just have to say, um, to uh, really reiterate a little bit of what um, Arun had just said with the welcoming nature of the Firefly community. They are always willing to listen to new business cases, new new contributors, um, just the way they go above and beyond coming to calls, um, inviting people to their calls. It definitely is a great example of what a community should look like. So thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Appreciate that. Thanks, Bobby. Other questions, comments, concerns? I would like to... Uh... Um, bring one up if nobody else has one, so. All right, um, so the, the, I think the, the work that Firefly has been doing is great. The, the number of adopters, um, I thank you so much for presenting that pipeline. I think that's a really interesting view um, into, you know, what may come uh, for maintainers and those sorts of things. Um, but it would be remiss of me if I didn't bring up the comment that was in the, the chat, right? Or in the uh, GitHub um, about the number of maintainers from Kaleido. Um, and the question I guess I have, or or maybe it's more of a comment, but the, there's a concern that I specifically have with a number of our projects, not just Firefly, um, that are maintained by a single organization or have a majority of maintainers from a single organization um, in that 
there's sometimes a challenge that exists in having those other maintainers' voices heard um, when it's very easy for uh, that single organization that has the majority of maintainers to basically override uh, the voices of those other maintainers. And so, you know, obviously we, we have other projects that are graduated in the state already, um, but I, I do want to make sure that the Firefly community is thinking about this and looking for ways to change this. Uh, as we move forward, because I think it's so important for, you know, everybody's voices to be heard and for um, the the community to allow for, um, you know, those those single voices, if you will. So that, I guess, you know, it's not necessarily a question, but it is just a something to point out and something to be thinking about um, moving forward. So Jim, I, I saw you raised your hand probably in response to that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, Tracy. Um, having lived through this this experience since the very early days of uh, High Pleasure, I definitely know what you mean. Uh, and this is something I, I've been telling the team that uh, to build a proper community, sometimes we just have to slow down um, by doing the all the communications, all the all the decisions, all the architectural discussions, not within walls, right, of Kaleido, yes. but do it in the open. It's something that we we we're not hundred percent, of course, yet. Um, you know, we're all so used to describing people and make decisions, but what we're still this is something that's like on the top of our uh, our head. Because to build a strong community, you have to do it this way. There's no other way. So yeah, definitely appreciate that that feedback. And it's something that we're we've been striving to do uh, for a while. And and hopefully the recent additions of new committers is. Uh, a testament to to that practice. Great, thanks, Jim. We have like five seconds left. Any comments, questions? Can we? Are we ready to vote? Um, I make a motion. And... I'll make a motion for Firefly to move to graduated status. Bobby, thank you. Do we have a second? Seconded. I think that was Stephen. That was. Steven. Uh, thank you for that, um, Sean. Cool. Uh, we'll do this quick. I will call your name. Please announce whether you are for, against, or abstaining to vote uh, in the matter of Firefly graduation. Arun, how do you vote? I vote for. For. Rama, how do you vote? For. Bobby, how do you vote? For. Stephen, how do you vote? For. Jim, how do you vote? For. Peter is out. Marcus, how do you vote? Four. Tracy, how do you vote? Yeah, I vote for um, Peter also voted for in the chat, so we can count that as well. I will count that as well. That is unanimous of the attending TOC members on Firefly graduation. Uh, I'm sorry, unanimous decision to graduate Firefly or to move Firefly to graduated status. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. And thank you, Nico, I, and the Firefly my uh, community. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Throw the hats in the air. Thank, right. thank you all so much. All right. Thanks, everybody. Sorry for running long. Um, we will talk again next week. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, bye.